Hello, this video provides an overview of the Intelligence Hub Aviva Pi connection. Intelligence Hub is an industrial data ops solution and is purpose built to model and manage real time transactional and time series data at the edge. And it's used to create a perfect payload. Um, it obtains, curates, and delivers data for a specific system, a specific use case, and of course, for a specific user community. So in this case, of course, we'll be dealing with uh, time series data and Aviva Pi. This video will provide an overview of the connection input and output options. I'll show some simple examples, an example of using the asset framework assets um, to obtain data that is um, both asset attribute data, whether it's mapped to uh, Pi points or not, and also a simple example of creating assets and pi points in pi. So I'll be using a pi asset framework database. It's this reactors demo, and I, you can see I have just a few assets to find here. And what I've already done is I've connected to pi. We have an agent. Intelligence Hub provides an agent, which is installed as a Windows service. In this case, it's running on the same server as my hub as the intelligence hub runtime and i connect to that agent by specifying the location and the port and then you know i securely connect with a a username and password that i provide on the first time the agent runs it creates a self-signed certificate um, so it's a secure connection that uses uh, web sockets um, to obtain data from pi intelligence hub can obtain metadata from asset framework historical point data from data archive, real-time data from Pi snapshot. And it can be configured, you know, based on the input that's selected, whether to pull for data or subscribe to data. Intelligence Hub obtains um, event data from event frames, historical data. And when we subscribe to data, we can obtain new data, change data, deleted data, and late arriving data. So there's lots of options. And finally, which I'll demonstrate today, we also can create assets and Pi points in Pi system. So I'll just show you a real quick example of how we browse the asset framework databases. We can select an asset and create an input query. So this is the input that I've just created, and it's an asset type query. This is the specific query that's used, and it's going to, going to obtain current values. This is a parent. Um, the line has children, so this will also um, provide me with the current values of the children of the asset. So you can see here we're obtaining the value for the attributes, including nested attributes here delineated with the, the pipe, and this outlet pump and reactor are children of the line asset. In many cases, it's possible to obtain metadata in addition to attribute values, so here we can see the asset name, the template name from Pi, the path that was defined in the Pi hierarchy, the element ID, and um, other metadata. So that's just one example of many connection inputs. As I mentioned earlier, we also have connection outputs that can be used to create assets, and I'll be using these later in the demo. So that's a very quick overview of an input connection. But ultimately, what we want to do is use that, those inputs in solutions. So what I'm going to do next is walk through just a very simple example. What I've um, mocked up here very quickly is a solution that, in this case, and just for this demonstration purpose, is exposing data via the Intelligence Hub internal MQTT broker. So this is our MQTT client, our UNS client here that I'm using for diagnostic purposes to show you the data that's being ex, um, uh, exposed by Intelligence Hub published to the MQTT broker. So this is the payload. This is my perfect payload here. And what I've done is I've defined the, the attributes in this case, which might be fields within a database. I could write this payload to a database. They might be aligned with files. Maybe I'm using, I'm writing to uh, AWS S3 or Azure Blob Storage. I want to define this perfect payload, and I'll show you how I do that. And we'll use a pipeline to do that. So within Intelligence Hub, 
we have pipelines and pipelines are used to define all the transformations that have to be um, performed on a payload after it's read and before it's written to an endpoint. But we're not merely moving data. In this case, I've provided a, a very simple model for my data. And that's my uh, what I've modeled here in Intelligence Hub. So I, I want to have an attribute name, an asset name, a value, you know, just as you'd expect value, uh, quality time. And uh, you know, I've defined the uh, desired data types for each of those. Now, in my case, I, you know, I'm kind of going after a narrow table uh, format here, and my values, where I'm, you know, normalizing the attribute name as opposed to a wide table, and I have values that are numbers and also text. So, just the way that I've come up with things here, I, I have two different models, and I'm going to impose those in the pipeline. So, back to the pipeline now, and I can show you that again. This pipeline is being triggered every 30 seconds. It's all configurable and it's using a connection input that I've previously created. And this is an interesting connection input. It's our it's the asset changes input. So here I'm querying based on a, te a template, an asset framework template, the pump template, and I'm going to obtain all of the data for every attribute of every pump, every asset that's derived from this template pump whether it be an, an attribute that's defined in asset framework and has a static value, you know, or, or uh, an attribute that's associated with a pi point. I have a subscription ID. So the way this works is every time I run this subscription, I obtain the data since the last time I've subscribed. And that's every added update, insert, and delete. And you can see how that's organized here. And I'm getting really rich metadata with this name, model, pass. So again, the model is the asset framework template the point name, and of course, as you'd expect, quality time value. And I'm using that in my pipeline. So what I'm doing is I read that in every 30 seconds. I break up that object that has the transaction type, you know, the add, update, insert, or delete. I break up the array. I'm creating a path. If you might notice that this is just a simple JavaScript transformation that you can perform within a pipeline, the path coming from Pi had slashes moving in the opposite direction and it had two slashes and I want to change that into an MQTT topic path. I don't want that to be in the payload uh, so I'm moving that to what we call metadata. Any pipeline has the event data that's moving through it, the metadata that can be processed independently, and even state data that transcends multiple executions of a pipeline. What I'm doing here is a very simple switch so I'm just checking to determine if the value is a number. If it is I model it with my number model and I map the uh, attributes that are you know that I've defined to the event values that are moving through the pipeline and I do that for numbers and text and then finally I write it to MQTT so that's a very example a simple example of you know how we create a solution to provide that payload now there are many stages here if I wanted to you know I could write that and if I you know I wanted to write this to and I previously had this, um, you know, configured. What I could do is, I could select my output, and maybe, you know, I'm going to write it to S3, and I would, you know, pull that in, and, uh, you know, then I could configure that, and I could configure the blob that I was writing to, and things like that. But here, I just have this real simple example with MQTT. So I'm going to move on to another simple example that was an asset based query and just to provide uh, capability and just real quickly move to a different example I can of course obtain data from different sources so even beyond pi so here I have a model where I have pressure and temperature sales order information varying temperature I use that in an instance and in instances where the uh, data from multiple sources can be mapped so here I have sales order information and if I wanted to combine sales order information that might be coming from uh, SQL Server, for example, and this is a very simple example, I'll just look at my SQL Server connection here. And I have a query that returns sales order information, and I can just map that in via drag and drop. Um, but I've already done all the mapping, and uh, you can just test my payload here. And I'll have sales order information and pressure and temperature, which are incidentally coming from um, a CAP Server EX connection. So we have data from OPC UA, data from SQL Server, and then data from 
pi, and that's going to all be one payload. So I've mapped to, to pi, as you can just tell from the naming convention. Right, I just go to uh, kept server ex, for example, just to show one more example, and I just have a simple ramp, you know, that I can drag and drop in here. Actually, I'll just delete out, so you can see that live. Save, test, and there's my payload. So in this case, pipeline is very simple. Just write it to MQT. So I have my flow coming in, and every 10 seconds I write that. So that's a payload. And again, I'm just using MQTT as an example. We could write that to uh, many different endpoints. So that's composite uh, a payload from with source with many sources. All right, just moving on quickly, something else that's very important to show is the ability to write to Pi. So, so far I've been reading from, now I'm going to write to, and I have a really simple example for that as well. And we're going to create some assets in Asset Framework. So currently I have line one, two, and three. What I'm going to do is create a line four and two new pi points. And just to keep things very simple, I've defined a model, my path to the asset, the new asset I'm going to create, and then the new tags that I'm going to create with the values. And here you can see, you know, I have my plant with a line. So this is a hierarchy, asset name, and I'm just merely uh, simulating data for the temperature and pressure to keep it real simple. So that's my payload that I'm going to send to Pi. And here I'll use a connection output. So I have my to Pi. So I have uh, my flow coming in with the instance and every second I'm gonna write data. Um, I might slow that down a little bit here just so we're sure we can see what's happening. I can break up the array and then I send it to this connection output. And you can see I'm taking data from the payload with our dynamic reference notation to create the path, to create the asset. And this will also create the, the uh, point. And I have the create option here on my output. So let's save that. Let's make sure. And uh, go back to my pipeline and turn it on, enable it. And here's the data in Pi. So it created line four. And I'm writing the new values for pressure and temperature. So that's an example of a pipeline that's being used to send data to Pi to create an asset and a point. So in summary, lots of options with the Intelligence Hub Aviva Pi connection, input and output um, from Intelligence Hub to Aviva Pi system to create assets, create points, and of course, obtain Pi point data and asset uh, attribute data. Thanks for your time.